everyone. How are you all? Today we are starting literary criticism. I hope you have been following all the NTNN study plans. You should. I have also given the PDF in our uh, Telegram group. Did you see that? Join us in Telegram. And Today we you... are starting literally. Oh, sorry, guys. And I have given all the PDF. You can use the PDF. We have, what are the topics that we have covered so far, Ankita? Yes. Uh, we have covered British literature, then post-colonial literatures, and now we are starting criticism. Very good. Very good. That is where we are now. Yeah. Dear friends, if you like our video, you can share it with your friends so that they can start watching it right away. So how is your preparation going? I hope these videos are helping you. You should not be stressed. You should feel happy about all the positive things that you've done. So much learning. You know, imagine yourself, what, what were you one year ago, two years ago? There has been so much amazing learning, isn't it? So it's wonderful. We are all growing so much by learning more and more and more. Don't have any negative thoughts. It is all positive. It's all wonderful. It is wonderful that you have so many opportunities to learn. Dear friends, we have here with you a presentation on literary criticism. Let me just remind you there is ancient literary criticism, which is about Plato, Aristotle, Horace, Longinus, you know, Greco-Roman period. Then at the beginning of the Renaissance period, we have Sydney. There was the Tudor trio, there was Ben Johnson. And then in the 17th century, there were so many changes. The Civil War happened. And at the end of the 17th century, started Neoclassicism. So after the Renaissance period, we have Neoclassicism. And the most important English Neoclassicists are Dryden and Johnson. And after that, everybody knows it is romanticism. And we have Wordsworth and Coleridge, but they are not the only romantic critics. We have Schlegel, Schleiermacher, Schelling, the German romantics. After the romantic critics, we have the Victorian critics. Who are the Victorian critics? We have Matthew Arnold, Walter Pater. And uh, John, uh, sorry, uh, John Ruskin, so many Victorian critics also, even Henry James. Henry James was a, an American critic who came to England. And then after that, we have the 20th century modernists. Hannah, who are the modernist critics? We have Virginia Woolf, we have Ezra Pound, we have T.S. Eliot. And after modernism, we have, of course, Postmodernism. So, Ankita Ganguly from Kolkata, my dear, dear student is here. She is an amazing girl who did her MA in JNU and she is going to interact with us today. Hello, everybody from Ankita. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the first question, guys. Are you ready? This is day 716. Wow. Choose the correct statement. Criticism refers to the act of critiquing a particular work of literature through the framework of certain literary theories. Is it correct? I think that is correct. Criticism evolved from the Greek word krites or krite, meaning to judge. Ankita, do you think that is correct? Yes, it's right. Criticism emerged in about 1,000 years from the time of Homer to the establishment of the Roman Empire under Augustus Caesar. Augustus Caesar was the first emperor of Rome. And from the time of Homer, there were like five centuries after, six centuries after that Augustus Caesar came. At that time, criticism emerged. Do you think that is true, guys? You two babies, tell us. There are so many people answering. Ankita, are you happy with them? 
Yes, very much. <laughs> they are wonderful, aren't they? Yes, <laughs> wonderful. I got to uh, see all the YouTube babies talking to us here. Very good. So we have Dr. Firdos Rashid, who is saying all is true. Anna Kamachi is saying, wow. Kartika Nayar Shrabani. Then Pratik, wonderful guys. All are true. Ankita, what is this painting? It is Greek classicism, isn't it? Classical masks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Ankita, which work among the following was the first to spark the ideas of criticism through its comparative analysis regarding who is the better playwright? There is a work, a play, in which the discussion of who is the better playwright is happening. Is it Oedipus Rex? Is it Medea? The frogs or Lysistrata. Ankita, what do you think? It is The Frogs by Aristophanes. Wow. Many of them are saying uh, different answers. But Aparna Pele said it is frogs. The frogs. It is correct. It is The Frogs by Aristophanes. Ankita, who wrote Oedipus Rex? Simple question. Sophocles. <laughs> Sophocles. Who wrote Medea? Euripides. That's right. Who wrote Lysistrata? And the frogs. Aristophanes, Aristophanes wrote The Frogs and Lysistrata. Wonderful. Very good. There, there is the debate between who is the better playwright. You two babies, uh, what, which are the two writers who are in the debate? Can you tell us? Which are the two writers who are debating? It is Euripides and Aeschylus. Aeschylus and Euripides are debating who is the better playwright. Wonderful. Okay, Ankita. Who said Western philosophy is a series of footnotes to Plato? Is it Thomas Hobbes, Francis Bacon, Hayden White or Alfred North Whitehead? It is a Professor Alfred North Whitehead who said this. Wow, you see him here. Very good. Do you know, Ankita, what did Hayden White write? Yes, he wrote about meta history or history That's rather. Right. He Hayden yes. White wrote meta history. Do you know what Thomas Hobbes wrote? Leviathan. Ha, ah, Leviathan is correct. Very good. All these are true about Plato's Republic except Dash. Republic is a Socratic dialogue, probably set against the Peloponnesian War. YouTubers, do you agree to that? It is written in 10 books. Do you agree to that? Its central concern is the idea of human liberty. Do you agree to that? Here, Plato also expounds his theory of forms. Which of this is not true? Ankita. Here yeah, the option C is wrong because uh, in Republic, the central concern is the idea of justice. Very good. It is in Rousseau's social contract yeah. that the central idea is human liberty. What is the opening line of Rousseau's social contract, Ankita? Man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. Man is born free, but everywhere he's in chains. Very good. For Plato, art is dash. Is it essentially deceptive? Mainly concerned with sensual pleasure. Psychologically destabilizing. That means leading to madness. Is all of these true, YouTubers? Ankita, what do you think? YouTubers are saying the correct answers. Yes. What do you think? All are true. Amazing, guys. All are true. Are you loving the pictures that we have put here? Amazing, isn't it? According to Aristotle, tragedy is dash. Is it an imitation of an action that is serious, complete, and of a certain magnitude? Ankita. Othello slips on a banana peel, hits his head and dies. Can it be a tragedy, Ankita? No, it won't be a tragedy. <laughs> because it is not serious. Serious. 
Othello is killing Desdemona and quickly running away. Can it be a tragedy, Ankita? Oh no, it won't be tragedy. <laughs> because it is not complete. Othello has yeah. to suffer. All right. Yes. Second option, they call it employs language embellished with each kind of artistic ornament. Different kinds of ornaments should be there in different parts of the language. You know, different ornaments should be there in different parts of the language. Is it true? Oh, YouTube is bursting, Angita, with the answer. Third option, they go, it purges the excess of our emotions through the process of catharsis. Angita, you don't have to say the answer. YouTubers have, every one of them, all 127 of them have said, B is right. All are true. Very good. Very good. Very good. Hey, I'm so excited. We have studied so much. You're all going to do your exams very, very, very well. The rest of the days, you just do your best. Okay, guys? You will do well in the exam. I feel it in my blood. Okay. Horace's critical masterpiece, Ars Poetica, was first translated by, oh my God. Is it John Skeleton, Elizabeth I, John Dryden, or Alexander Pope? It must have been a very serious, a very major work. Who wrote it, Ankita? Who tra translated it? It was Queen Elizabeth I. Really? Queen Elizabeth I is said to have translated Horace's Ars Poetica. Wow. Longinus was the first romantic critic who talked about sublime. The bold Longinus, all the nine inspire. Who said this about Longinus? Is it Dryden, Johnson, Pope, Arnold? Ankita? It is Pope who said this. That is right. It is Pope. 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 All right. Longinus was appreciated by Pope in Essay on Criticism. Summa Theologica uh, in Roman Catholicism is a systematic compendium of theology. Who wrote it? Summa Theologica. Is it St. Augustine? St. Thomas Aquinas? St. Paul? Ankita, what do you think? It is St. Thomas Aquinas who wrote this. St. Thomas Aquinas who wrote this. Very good. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote Summa Theologica. And he is referred to, St. Thomas Aquinas' criticism is referred to in which work? A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. Very good, very good, very good. Choose the correct statement. Humanism promoted literary criticism. Is that true? Puritans like Stephen Gosson challenged nature, value, function of poetry. Renaissance criticism promoted the notion of imitation. And there was an emphasis on the didactic function of literature. All are true or what? Ankita, what do you think? Yes, all these are true. Very good. All these are true. Very good. Uh, now, this is a humanist writing, you know, on his book. Very good. Identify the correctly matched pair. Certain notes of instruction concerning the making of verse or rhyme in English. YouTubers, do you know it is by George Gascoigne? Defense of poetry, music and stage plays. Do you think it was written by Thomas Lodge? And Yedeko, the art of English poesy. Is it by George Putenham? Or is it all are true? What do you think? Remember, uh, Thomas Lodge did write this as a reply to Stephen Gosson. YouTubers are thinking all are true. I think they're right. What do you think, Ankita? Yes, all are true. Very good. All are true. Certain notes of instruction by George Gascoigne. Ankita, can you tell me another book by George, George Gascoigne? Uh, uh, the Steel of Glass. Yes, The Steel of Glass. Yes, yes, yes. Thomas Lodge wrote Defense of Poetry, Music and Stage Plays against Stephen Gosson. The Art of English Poesy is by George Putenham. He was inspired by Sydney. All right. Who said about Shakespeare? He was indeed honest and of an open and free nature. 
He had an excellent fantasy, brave notions and gentle expressions wherein he flowed with that facility that sometimes it was necessary. He should be stopped. That means stop Shakespeare. You're overdoing it. Like that somebody said. Oh, if only he blotted out a thousand. That means he wrote 1000 lines unnecessarily extra. Who said this, Ankita? Is it Ben Johnson, Samuel Johnson, Dryden or Pope? It was Ben Johnson. You, babies. Oh, you can also say. People think it is Ben Johnson. What do you think, yes. Ankita? Yes, it is Ben Johnson. It is Ben Johnson, but actually they are saying Johnson. They could as well be saying Samuel Johnson. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the YouTubers. The YouTubers are saying Johnson. Okay, it is Ben Johnson. Would he had uh, blotted out a thousand, said Ben Johnson. But don't worry, guys. Ben Johnson and Shakespeare were friends only, right? Okay, all of the following are characteristics of enlightenment except what? Use of reason to discover laws of nature. Desire for order in the society and democratic values. Was that a feature of enlightenment? Uh, desire to protect human liberty. Embracing of nihilism. Uh, embracing of nihilism. That I don't believe. What do you think, Ankita? Yeah, there was an embracing of deism, not nihilism. Aha! Dekho yaar, listen to me. Enlightenment used reason important, order important, liberty important, deism important, D-E-I-S-M. Got it, guys. Next question. Who denied Descartes' view that the mind has innate ideas? Rene Descartes was like Noam Chomsky. He believed that mind has innate ideas and believed that the mind is a tabula rasa. On which YouTube videos are writing. Your mind is a tabula rasa. And on your mind, YouTube videos are writing. <laughs> Experience is writing. But somebody denied that idea. Mind is not a tabula rasa. This person must have been an empiricist. He believed in experience. Is it Francis Bacon? Spinoza? John Locke? Or Isaac Newton? Tell me, Ankita. It is John Locke. YouTubers are also right. They're all saying John Locke. What did you say, Ankita? Yes, he was the one who talked about our brain or mind being a blank slit. But our experience is right. And against we Descartes' view. Yes. yes. Against yes. Descartes' view, John Locke said, experience is what is writing on your mind. Tabula yes. rasa. Very good. Dryden's essay on heroic tragedy, which lays bare the principles of heroic drama, is prefaced to Dash. Thank you, Gaming with Abhi. Ankita, Gaming with Abhi is loving this. So Dryden's essay on heroic tragedy, which lays bare the principles of heroic drama, is a preface to which play? Is it All for Love, Conquest of Granada, Wild Gallant, or Aurangzeb? Which of these four? Ankita, you can choose. All for Love. Conquest of Granada, Wild Gallant, or Aurangzeb? It is the Conquest of Granada. Charadang, correct. Essay on heroic tragedy is a preface to Conquest of Granada. Next question. Which work of Ben Johnson among the following was critically analyzed by Dryden? Dryden took a work of Ben Johnson and critically analyzed it. Is it Volpony, the silent woman? Every man in his humor or oh, the alchemist. Which of these works did Dryden analyze? YouTubers, Ankita, what do you think? It is uh, the silent woman. Epicene or the silent woman. That is analyzed. You know, in, uh, in this play, Ankita, Morose is a bachelor. He is, has an aversion to noise. He does not want noise. Because of that reason, he cannot marry. Because all women make noise. That is what Ben Johnson is saying. And Morose is finally getting married. One girl is coming and marrying him. Soon after marriage, she starts making noise. <laughs> Epicene means a person of two. What, Angita? Sexual qualities. 
ha two genders two sexes two genders. very good that is a silent woman uh ben johnson silent woman was analyzed by dryden ankita you have to tell us in which work dryden analyzed episcene it was in uh, preface to the uh, no 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 an essay of dramatic poesy ankita yes. you said it thank you even though you made a mistake at the beginning remember dear friends when you are in the exam hall if preface to the fables comes to your mind think again is it true because i will not be there so, to say no 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 okay it is an essay of dramatic poesy among the four characters in an essay of dramatic poesy who defines a play as a just and lively image of human nature just and lively image of human nature representing its passions and humors who said that tell me guys ankita do you know i'm just sitting this straight is, uh, lycidius lycidius it is lycidius very good it is lycidius the man who praised french drama who says a uh, play is a just and lively image of human nature very good guys lycidius who among the following is considered the pioneer of biographical criticism is it samuel johnson matthew arnold john ruskin or john dryden biographical criticism youtubers they know ankita this one they know what do you think ankita it is samuel johnson why samuel johnson is called pioneer of biographical criticism ankita because his work lives of the eminent english poets which was published in 1781 it was a pioneering work in the contemporary period and it contained 52 uh, prefaces of poets including cowley and milton and it was a very masterpiece or a, you know very popular work back then and the first of its kind which talks uh, which talked about the biographies of the stalwarts and the poets you know all those writers this ankita is like this when she opens her mouth she is like an encyclopedia and hey, guys remember youtubers are also there like that there are many people in youtube they are also saying all the correct answers they know a lot i am so proud of you all guys proud of you it is indeed samuel johnson very good dash is a literary magazine established in 1798 by august wilhelm and karl wilhelm frederick schlegel it is found to be the Uh, it is considered to be the founding publication of german romanticism is it the athenaeum the criterion the egoist or none of these what do you think ankita which is the it answer is the athenaeum <clears throat> the athenaeum that is right it is the athenaeum there was an english athenaeum also to which elizabeth barrett browning contributed athenaeum is the periodical of the german romantic school all right look at athenium here choose the correctly matched pair kant phenomena and noumena frederick von schlegel romantic irony jean jacques rousseau return to nature or is it all are true ankita what do you think it is all are true amazing very good it is all are true kant talked about the uh, the concepts of phenomena and noumena schlegel talked about romantic irony and rousseau talked about return to nature pope said follow nature rousseau said no 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 return to nature shrabani momita and many others are saying the correct answers proud of you guys wordsworth's preface to lyrical ballads which defends the experimental poems of lyrical ballads asserted that the purpose of this collection was dash oh my god so much to read did wordsworth say that his purpose is to choose incidents and situations from common life to relate or describe them throughout as far as was possible in a selection of language really used by men at the same time to throw over them a certain coloring of imagination whereby ordinary things should be presented to the mind in an unusual way 
and above all to make these incidents and situations interesting by tracing in them truly though not ostentatiously the primary laws of our nature youtubers are all saying the correct answer ankita i'm proud of them all are true wonderful isn't it ankita wonderful yes okay which quality among the following should be possessed by an ideal critic according to wordsworth ankita he must be both poetical and philosophical is it true yes his sensibility must be trained by a continuous study of poetry is it true yes he must be very young is not true wordsworth thought that a critic should be a man of mature age so it must be both a and b right ankita yes both a and b very good it is both a and b very good very good very good who among the following inspired and shaped coleridge's thought and praxis wordsworth david hartley kant all of the above from wordsworth he got a real inspiration from david hartley he learned about associationist psychology from immanuel kant he got the idea that imagination is shaping power isn't it ankita yes all of the yes. above yes da da it is all of the above beautiful oh yo so much to read criticism questions aise hi hote hai na बहुत पढ़ना पड़ता है और जब हम एग्जाम हॉल में बैठ बैठते हैं कौन जाने ये वो मॉनिटर काम करेगा कि नहीं सो गाइस यू विल रिमेम्बर द क्वेश्चन बट वी शुड ऑल प्रे टुगेदर प्लीज गॉड लेट अवर मॉनिटर्स वर्क प्रॉपरली दैट इज द प्रेयर वी शुड गिव Okay, listen to this. All these are true about biography and literary, except last seven chapters discuss the poetic theory of Wordsworth, which gives a remarkable demonstration of Coleridge's critical powers. Is it true? Last seven chapters discusses the poetic theory of Wordsworth. I think that's true. In chapter four, Coleridge makes his famous statement. that fancy and imagination contrary to widespread belief are two distinct and widely different faculties is it chapter 4 in chapter 13 called on the imagination coleridge this explains his distinction i think they are right in the last chapter coleridge talked about the rhizomatic movement rhizomatic movement of imagination in poets of excellent quality ankita we are confused my youtube babies and me tum bolo the, the last option is obviously wrong yeah he never rhizome. talked about yeah he never talked about it rhizome is a theory of the loose and guatari dear yeah. friends some of the youtubers got confused because they thought chapter 4 mein nahi hai लेकिन चैप्टर फोर में है चैप्टर फोर में वो शुरुआत में बताता है दो चीज होते हैं फैंसी एंड इमेजिनेशन और उसके बाद इन चैप्टर थर्टीन इमेजिनेशन को बहुत ज्यादा डिस्क्राइब कर रहा है है ना ही इज एक्सप्लेनिंग इट इन चैप्टर थर्टीन ऑल राइट डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज ये फ्रेंड्स Oh, who said the poet is a nightingale who sits in darkness and sings to cheer its own solitude with sweet sounds? So sweet, isn't it? So sad. Who said that? Is it Wordsworth, Shelley, Keats, or Byron? YouTubers, are you loving this? Let us know along with the answers. Ye bhi bolo na. If you like our video and you like the session. Yes, Aparna Pillai has come up with the right answer. It is Shelley who said that the poet is a nightingale, and Angita who said Shelley is an ineffectual angel. It was Matthew Arnold. That is right, Angita. You knew it, Anna. Very good. So that brings us to the end of this session, guys. It was a very vibrant 
session on literary criticism, all aspects, all major authors, all works. You can read extra. And why was it vibrant? Because you gave us energy, your answers, your participation. Thank you very much. You can read extra and I'll be back tomorrow with more. Ankita and me. Bye-bye.